Good, thank you. How are you, Robbie? I'm good. I'm good. Now, listen, I've got to let the the listeners in on obviously what we were talking about because it does sound very um, disrespectful that I'm laughing as I'm saying your name. But we were just talking before we started about how to pronounce your your last name, and as I was saying it in my head, I was stuffing it up. So yes, I apologise. <laughs> No, that's all right. I've heard a lot of variations of it, so it's all right. (laughs) Now, you're back in the pool now, obviously. Was it easier or harder that that sort of first week back? How did you feel when you first got back in? Uh, When I first got back in, I honestly did not know what to expect. I thought I was going to be pretty shocking, um, be really unfit, but it was actually surprisingly okay. Um, My speed was still pretty good, but aerobic, wow. That really wasn't very good when I got back in. And the coach looked after you though, did he? Didn't, you know, start smashing you too early, let you build yourself back up? Yeah, we, Nick uh, thankfully gave us some sets that were a little bit easier. Um, It started to creep up a little bit in like a effort, but um, it was, it was getting gradually harder. So it wasn't too bad. Now, mate, what I like to do on this show is um, and take all the guests back to where they first started. And for you guys, the age group swimmers, we don't have to go that far back because you guys aren't that old. As you said, you've just turned 18. So we don't have to go too far back. But, you know, what are the earliest memories for you of, um, you know, being in the pool and what really attracted you to towards swimming? Um, Even when I was a little kid, I always really loved the water. And I would always watch my brother swimming and when he was younger and just watch how he'd do it and then I'd get in and you know give it a go fluff around a little bit and then we would do like little road trips with my family up to a country meet in Ballarat and I always really really loved that because it was all of us together going on little road trips and swimming and it was it was really fun Yeah. yeah it was more about enjoying it rather than the results of it all you're just enjoying the experience yeah, it was really, really fun. I just, I loved to, sw- loved to swim when I was younger. So just being able to do it was really good. And I really just love the feel of the water and yeah. I want to get stuck into last year's Age Nationals because you killed it. You came away with three individual medals, as I said, plus some relay success as well. I think you got gold in the 100 fly. Correct me if my research is wrong here, but you got gold in the 100 fly, gold in the 200 IM, which is probably why they're your favorite events. Um, (laughs) Silver in the 200 freestyle as well. Now, before we get to that meet itself, I'm always interested in when people have a really good meet and a sort of a standout meet. You know, what led to that? How was training for you leading up to that? You know, did you have a great block where you were just fit, healthy, you didn't miss any sessions, you know, you didn't have time away? What what went so right for you? I don't know, we're casting our mind back a year and a bit. Um, but yeah, what went so right for you last year, do you think that you got those results? Um, well, I moved clubs before states. So I think I moved in September. So I moved that's when I moved to MLC, I think. Yeah. And so I had a different coach, a different atmosphere. And um, I guess you, you become more fresh with like you get all of your new mentality and just a different way of training. And I started training more fly individually. So um, that really helped my 100 fly because I used to be a backstroker. So yeah, I just, I didn't miss that many sessions and I was really kind of focusing on more of my technique and less of the outcome and just trying to remove as many expectations as I could. Mm. So, so there's a bit of a fresh start for you as well. There was a new perspective. You were learning new things, but you're also buying into them too. It wasn't just that you were learning like, Oh, that's interesting. I've never heard that before. You were like, Oh, I really like that. And you took it on board and, and really fed it into how you thought. Yeah. And I also needed to go on a diet cause I needed to lose a little bit of weight to get to my race weight and, find out where what weight I race best at and yeah so when you say you go on a, on a diet that's interesting to me in terms of like was it nutrition wise that there were certain things that you were having that you shouldn't have been with certain things that it might not have even been that it might have been certain things that you weren't having that you needed to be having uh yeah there was a lot of things that I should have been having and I wasn't so I don't 
generally love salads, but I don't love like, you know, your broccoli and your asparagus. I don't and think you're alone there, those. mate. <laughs> really? I've heard a few people that love them. So yeah, I don't really like those. So I generally just go more for a salad. Um, and I just wasn't eating enough red meat. So my iron was really low. Yeah. Um, so I didn't have a lot of energy. Uh, yeah. And then it's just changing my portion sizes and when I was eating mm. was also a bit off. So yeah. yeah. No, and I'm yeah, I'm glad you brought it up because yeah, as I said, I find it interesting because do a lot of people do, I guess, tend to talk about it as as weight and racing weight and and what they're eating. But to me, mm-hmm. it's just fuel for your body, and it's it's not you know, it's just what works best for you. So as you said, it wasn't that um you know you were probably too big. It was just you weren't having things that you probably should have been having, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden you started to your body gave you a much better response because you were feeding it the right. Energy. another way yeah. i always say yeah you know putting the right petrol in the car yes yes that's how my nutritionist said to think about it and it's not about taking the foods that you love out of your diet it's more about just having maybe a smaller portion or something like that or eat it at a different time and yeah yeah finding the right balance which is something as a coach i find very very, very hard but luckily i don't have to get up and do 100 fly mate so i'm okay yeah. <laughs> Now, was there a standout swim for that week? As I said, you, you won the 100 fly, you won the 200 IM, silver in the 200 free. You also had some other great results, by the way. You know, I'm not downgrading those. They just weren't medal, medal winnings. But for you, they might have been great swims as well. And obviously, relay success. What were some of the standouts that week? Um, I actually really loved the 100 fly. I really wasn't expecting that. Um, yeah, I really tried my all because the 100 fly and the 200 IM were on the same day and I didn't have much of a break between the two. But 100 fly was definitely a standout for me. because You cracked really- the minute too. You went 59, didn't you? Yeah, 59-1-4, I think. Yeah, it, that was really, really surprising. I didn't know how fast I was going to go, but just give it a crack, you know, just have a go. And... Yeah, that was the result. And I looked back and I was like, oh my God, I just did that. So that was pretty good. <laughs> Absolutely. You did. You killed it. Now, talk to me about, you know, a massive program because you, you had to deal with a pretty big program that week. And it's always interesting to me when someone does so well in a lot of events. To me, as a coach, it means you're doing a lot of the right things away from the pool. You're recovering, right? You're warming up when you need to. You're eating when you need to. You, you're ticking all the boxes along the way. How important was that for you? And was that something you are old enough now that you can do sort of on your own? Or did your coach have to so, sometimes tip you off and go, hey, listen, have you, you know, eaten enough yet? Have you drunk? Have you re- recovered enough? Or are you old enough now that you've got that covered? Um, I usually take naps in between like heats and finals and stuff. So I would obviously do that between my races because I do get quite tired and generally just eating a lot of carbs and protein in the middle of um, the sessions and mainly just stretching and trying to keep really relaxed and not be like tensed in my muscles, but yeah, warming up and cooling down. I'm probably not the quickest at getting in and out of the warm up and cool down pool. So <laughs> Nick, is that because are you chatting me. too much? Cause I know you said there you like to meet people and you like to yes. have a chat. Is that why you're in there for too long? Yes, I'm usually in there. I'm usually getting in there late into the cool down pool. And yeah, I'm usually chatting a little bit and don't really want to get in. But then once I'm in, I just try and do as much as I can before the next race and make sure I get home at a good hey, reasonable time. Yeah. Hey, talk to me about your coach, Nick. As I said, you train now at MLC. Um, you know, you've only been there, what now, for what? What's this been? Two years, a year and a half? I think almost two years, yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Nick's an amazing coach and I think he really understands me well and how I like to be trained and yeah, he kind of just opened my eyes to more of the data and stats that I needed to focus on in training as well. So like times that I should be hitting in training and, um, we had a lot more like aerobic things like a one and a two and a three and threshold and stuff. And I had no idea what they were when I moved. So just looking at different times and trying to pace myself a little bit more. So I didn't mm. cook myself pretty much in training yeah. and yeah, just opened my eyes to a lot of things that I wasn't thinking about before. And then I was thinking about when I moved. 
mate, 2019 Junior World Champs, Budapest. Um, you know, definitely you came off some good form at, at the Nationals, uh, at National Age, and, and then you, you took that into there. Some big moments for you, obviously, being a part of the relays. Um, mm-hmm. You know, for, for people who don't get those sort of experiences give us a little insight into how different that experience was we'll get to the racing in a second but in terms of just you know walking into the center the warm-ups the cool downs um, being around all the other athletes how different is that from anything you'd sort of experienced before yeah there was so many people there and there's so many different languages that are spoken spoken and um it was really quite intimidating i felt really nervous walking in because um yeah I'd never done something with that many people there so many eyes on you racing and felt really really nervous so um but it was really exciting to be there um there was just so many yeah just so many people there so many eyes on you uh racing but yeah warm down and cool warm up and cool down were very different because there's a lot more people warming up and cooling down obviously yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> did anyone look after you mate like this is obviously your first sort of big big trip there did anyone could have been a coach could have been a swimmer who's who's experienced in in that um environment did anyone sort of take you under their wing and give you some some advice and words of wisdom um well nick came with me because i had another one of our swimmers noah millard who was with us up there so yeah we were both there so nick my coach got to come up there with us. So oh, that was really good. Yeah. He, he knew how I trained and what I needed to do. So that made it a lot easier and more familiar. So I could just, you know, understand what I had to do and a little bit more homey as well. That is perfect for you. I, I think something that a lot of obviously swimming people know, but the people outside of swimming don't really understand is sometimes when you guys make teams, your coach doesn't get picked on that team. So, you know, for some people, they're on their like their first ever Olympic team. They've never been involved with, you know, the, the team that they're with. They're to getting to access to new coaches. This is the biggest ex- experience of their life. And the person that they always go to for advice and to calm them down isn't there. Although sometimes, you know, people buy tickets and scam their way around to, to <laughs> get access as well anyway. But yeah, that was um, very fortunate for you that uh, Nick got to go with you, eh? Yeah, I was really, really thankful. Um, Cause yeah, he really knows how I train and it was really, really good. But there were so many other coaches that I also got to meet that were really amazing and really nice and gave you a different perspective on how you were training and like technique and stuff. So that was really, really good. And just so many other people, really, really amazing people on that team. And I made some really, really close friendships. So, yeah. Absolutely. Now, racing wise, um, you must have been pretty stoked. You, you know, you got to be a part of the relays with the girls. And I think the four by two and the four by one relays um, eventuated into medals as well. You were in the heat swims of those. How fun was that to be with the girls? And how much of a good experience was it to, to watch the finals as well and get that experience? Yeah, it was really, really good to watch the finals because I just got to cheer on our girls in the 4x2 and the 4x1. But swimming the heats was really, really good because we were all trying to cheer, like, I don't know, really good camaraderie and Mm. psych each other up to race really well. And I could I was quite nervous to race that relay, like really, really nervous. Um, So it was really good to just have the girls there and just calm me down and really, really good just... Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned that. That's going to be my next question. Like a lot of the times people will say that relays are a bit more relaxing because they're around their mates and, and it's, you know, um, a bit of fun, but there's also another element that I was speaking to Tommy Neal about yesterday where you don't want to let your teammates down though. So there's that yeah. added pressure of like, okay, well, it's not just me that I'm going to let down now. If I don't do well, it's, I've got to let these three girls down for you. Yeah, is that, is I- that, was there, that where the nerves came from? Yeah, and I think one of them was my first race. So I was real like uh, there. So I was really, really nervous. And yeah, I really didn't want to let the team down and either not make the final or something like that. So yeah, I was really trying to try my hardest and just give it a crack. And I really wanted to put in my all for the team. So yeah. Now, I mean, in terms of, um, you know, age group swimming and, and open swimming, I think you've mentioned there you've just turned 18. 
um, you know, to the letter of the law in Australian swimming. Now you're an open swimmer. That's, that's how you've got, you've got to compete. But do you feel like that at the moment? Do you feel like you're still transitioning from being an age group swimmer to an open swimmer? And, and how comfortable would you be now to say, walk out on pool deck in a final of a, an open um, national champs? I think I'm a little bit more comfortable with it now, but I definitely think I am still transitioning from age to open a little bit more. So yeah, just trying to swim more in an open environment and trying to get used to it, like all of the competitors and yeah, it's because you're not in the age group. You don't have everyone with the same age. So it's quite intimidating being in the open. So yeah. <laughs> now away from the pool, what do you get up to? What do you like to do to, to have a bit of fun and relax and, and de-stress? Um, I really like to go catch up with my friends and go shopping. Um, I love doing like arts and crafts as well. So like I paint and make a lot of collages and draw. So there's a lot of things that I really like to And baking. Baking's fun. And baking, yes. Now, you said you listened to the Bronte um, interview the other day. What about getting into some pottery? I know she loves her pottery. Yes, I know she does love her pottery. I've seen a lot of her um, videos as well on Instagram of her doing pottery. Mm. It actually looks really, really cool. I don't know whether I have all the equipment for that, but I'd... It seems like a lot of fun. What shocked me was she keeps everything she makes. And if, to me, I was like, well, surely there's some like stuff you make that you're like, meh, you know, <laughs> just chuck that. And she's like, no, no, we keep everything we make. And she even had like a pencil holder that she had just sitting on her desk, which was like <laughs> literally this little thing that obviously was just like an off cup, but she'd made it into a pencil holder. So uh, yeah, very creative. Yeah. I, I'm a bit of a perfectionist. So if it's not like, exactly how i want it i'm like oh i don't know <laughs> yeah it'd be it'd be getting turfed if it was me yeah. she, she's a lot more patient than i am obviously now yeah i like to finish uh a lot of these chats mate with some less serious questions because to be honest with you all of that is fantastic and it's great about swimming but anyone that's listening to to this that wants to get to know you a little bit better is going to get way more out of these next few questions um than yeah. what we've just talked about in terms of you know how you are away from the pool so uh, they're pretty rapid fire. And, you know, as I say it, whatever first comes to your head, you throw the answer back to me. Okay. All right, you're ready to go. So first one is, what's your favourite music or, or artist? Who do you listen to? What type of music do you like? Oh, I like a lot of rap, um, which is a little bit different. But, um, yeah, couldn't really say an artist. But um, Is there anyone with the um, – starts with Lil – Lil Uzi. So bad Lil at names. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. I just listen to a lot of rap in the background and um, Cardi B as well. Yeah. No, that's <laughs> yeah, good. I listen to quite a few of that. So no, yeah. she, she, she's very good. Uh, my daughter um, loves that song. I like it like that. You know that song? I like it yes. like that. <laughs> Anytime that comes on, my daughter, who's nearly two, she just starts dancing around. She loves it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, Brings me to an interesting question, though, which I, I forgot to ask you. Um, in terms of, like, when you come out behind the blocks, do you listen to music? Do you have, like, a pre-race playlist that you listen to? Um, I kind of listen to quite a few different things as well, um, especially when I'm racing. So I also listen to Linkin Park, mm -hmm. um, like, Bleed It Out and everything like that. And that really helps. So behind the block, something that's really like upbeat, just get me in the mood. And But I only have one earphone in so I can talk to few other people in the marshalling room and yeah behind the blocks it's mainly just jump a few times slap my arms a little bit you know get them warmed up because i'll probably be a little bit cold and yeah <laughs> lincoln park um I, I love lincoln park and one of my favorites is obviously one step closer so d does that not make you a bit too aggressive uh, it would make me look around at my competitors and just think all right this is it let's go a little bit yeah a little bit because <laughs> they're all my friends but um yeah you do kind of want to do your best in the end so absolutely it's all it's all fun and games behind the blocks but when you hear boop mate, <laughs> all bets are off <laughs> yeah mate what about your favorite movies I, I won't limit it to one what is some of your favorite movies you like to watch um hmm i really like rom-coms mm -hmm any rom-com um but i also really really like shawshank redemption yeah, i think that's movie. a really really good movie and such a classic um 
And I also love She's the Man, if you've ever seen that. It's like... <laughs> Unfortunately, I have, but yes. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, that movie uh, made a lasting impression on uh, Amanda Bynes because she went pretty crazy after that, didn't she? Yeah, you know, but, she did yeah. a little bit, yeah. <laughs> yeah just a little bit. Um, mate, obviously, you know, I've said this before and I'll say it again, swimmers love their meals. They love a good feed because you work so hard that you need to keep fueling your body. What are some of your favourite meals to have? Um, anything with pasta or rice, really. So lasagna, spaghetti bolognese, anything like that. Um, oh, our family really loves curry as well. So yeah. anything like that, I always look forward to a meal like that. <laughs> now, I don't know how, how many other countries you've been to, but I know you've, you've been to Budapest, as I said. Do you have any favorite countries? Have you been anywhere else other than Budapest out of Australia? Um, I've been to quite a few places. Um, uh, my mum's side of the family actually live in England. So we usually go up, um, almost every year to go see them. So I always go there quite a few times. Um, we've been to Rome. Uh, Great place, Rome. Did you like yes. that? That was amazing. That was really, really pretty and very touristy. So I was glad I was kind of in my element, but yeah, it was very, very nice and really good landmarks and stuff about favorite tv shows to binge watch and you would have had a bit of time during all of this corona stuff have you been binge watching anything uh i have been binge watching a few things um i really love svu on uh foxtel and at mm. the moment i've been watching a lot of brooklyn 99 um dynasty uh what else Vampire Diaries, Gossip Girl. Well, you had me lot. at the first two and you've lost me after that, but I, <laughs> I, I'm with you on SVU. I love it. And um, Brooklyn Nine-Nine is fantastic as well. But yeah. yes. <laughs> uh, okay. We mentioned this before we start. I'm going to ask it anyway. What about TikTok? Do you have a favorite? You know, do you follow anyone that you, you like? How do you go on TikTok? Um, I am not great at TikTok. I... If it was going to be a dance or something, I'm not amazing at it. I get the first few moves and then I get a little bit lost. Um, but yeah, I like to watch other people doing them pretty good. Uh, I generally love the comedy a lot much more than the dancing. So I don't know whether really, I really follow many people on there, but um, yeah. I'm not like, very good at creating them. Yeah, but, no, yeah. it's all right, mate, to be honest. I, I can't get involved in it as we talked about before. It's it's not my cup of tea, but I, I ask the questions for the people and I know a lot of it's very popular out there. So I thought I'd throw it out there. Now, um, another question I'd like to finish with is uh, when I get you back on the podcast in say two or three years time, um, you know, by then you were 20, 21, what accomplishments would you like me to be adding at that top? So I've already started with, you know, national age champion. You've been to the junior world champs. What else would you like me to be putting at the top? And obviously not putting pressure on yourself, but this is just goals and aspirations, obviously. Um, in the future, I would really, really love to make the Olympics one day. I don't know whether it'll be in two or three years because we don't know whether it's going to be cancelled or not. Exactly. But um, yeah, I would really just love to make a senior team. That would just be amazing. And I'd really, really, my first senior team that I want to make would be the world short course mm -hmm. team. That, Cause I think that would give me a really good step up into the international open arena. So yeah, something along those lines and just making the team first and then have my expectations after that. <laughs> Absolutely, mate. Well, as I said, I think you're well on your way. Um, I think you're an absolute talent in the pool and, and what you've been able to achieve so far is fantastic. And I think you're definitely on the road to, to achieving those goals, no doubt. Um, I think it's a great time to wrap it up there while I'm pumping up your tyres. Um, <laughs> thank you very much for coming on. As I said, I know you guys are back into training now. And although, you know, Melbourne's in lockdown, you're still being able to get to the pool and come back and you've got other stuff going on. So appreciate you taking the time to come on for a chat. Good luck over the next, say, nine to even 12 months and, and racing. You've got steak that, that'll be up. Um, you guys have it early next year. I think so. Yeah, I think so. And then obviously open nationals and, and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, good luck with all of that over the next few years and definitely we'll keep in touch and hopefully I can get you back on for another chat. But until then, thank you very much for coming on Off The Block Swim podcast. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you.
Today's episode of Off The Block Swimming Podcast is proudly brought to you by Arena Australia and Arena NZ.